Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jermaine and today I will be showing you how I like to cover all my acne over here. As you can see, my face is not the most perfect. My acne situation used to be really really bad, like the hormonal teenager sort of acne where it's like all over my face and really really bumpy, red, angry and painful. I've managed to get the situation under control and I only get like the occasional breakout over on my jawline and on my chin, sometimes around my cheek area. So since my acne is on its way out of my life, I thought I would seize the chance to just like film a video showing you how I would cover my acne situation before I can't show you anymore. Obviously, I could have done this a lot sooner back when I had a lot more acne. But if you're watching this video, you probably have experienced or is still experiencing acne and you know how terrifying it is and how uncomfortable it is to put that face out there into public. So I hope you understand that I'm only feeling comfortable doing that now. In terms of actually caring for the acne and products that I use to help it live my life. <laughs> I, I'm thinking of doing like a separate video all about like how I got rid of my acne and things like that once my face is actually free of acne. So I would say it's coming in a couple of months time but not right now because I still get a little bit of breakouts here and there. So once my skin really really stabilizes, I will look into doing one of those videos. But for today's video, I'll be focusing mainly on how I prepare and prep my skin to be ready for makeup, how I actually use skincare to prep my skin, and then how I actually cover my acne situation with foundation and concealer and all that good stuff. Today's video is gonna be a little bit more on the technical side so if you're ready to learn my tips and tricks then just stay tuned and we'll get right into it firstly I want to talk about mindset when it comes to covering pimples on your face you gotta have to have realistic expectations for yourself so despite what social media likes to tell you if you have obvious protruding bumps on your face chances are that you can't actually hide the bumps because they are 3d and foundation and concealer they lie on top of the skin so you shouldn't beat yourself up over the fact that you can't cover a very 3d looking pimple obviously it wouldn't be perfect it will be slightly annoying because it's still a blemish on your skin like <laughs> this one but i guess the point of covering up our acne is to make us feel better right and we do that to the extent that we are actually capable of doing it i know how it feels to have very bumpy skin very unattractive skin i just want you to know that it's okay if your pimple don't completely disappear because that's not realistic the point of covering your acne is to make sure that the discoloration on your face like the redness or the dullness and all the scars and the fresh pimples they are all covered with like a skin toned color and that would make you look better overall even cleaner sometimes i think even though it's not gonna be like airbrushed perfect looking skin it's still going to make you look like a better version of yourself in terms of your skin i just wanted to put that out there because it's very difficult to deal with self-esteem when you have bad skin even for me it was really really easy to feel frustrated that nothing really works out for you and even though you have like makeup on your face you still look pretty weird and not yourself and you still don't look as good as you perhaps once were before the acne or you just don't look as good as you would want yourself to look like so yeah i guess realistic expectations really do help mentally with that inner battle that we, we all go through if we have acne you know before I start with any of my tips and tricks, I want to reference my own skin type so that you have a clearer understanding of what kind of issues I'm going through and what kind of skin I'm dealing with. Basically, I have dehydrated slash dry skin. More on the dehydrated side, I think. And how I know this is because like it feels tight almost all the time, but I don't really get a lot of dry patches or like rough spots. Instead, I do get oily throughout the day if I'm not well moisturized enough so that's how I know that my skin is just trying to produce enough sebum and oil to help my skin be moisturized. I don't really deal with oily skin right now and definitely acne prone skin. My acne situation is mainly hormonal which is I think the case for most cases of adult acne so when I am stressed or when it's the days leading up to the time of the month actually the last cycle my acne came like close to the end of my 
my period so I'm not sure what's going on there but I'm pretty sure it's hormonal and made me stress when I had my serious flared up acne situation I was actually depressed I'm gonna leave that story for another time I find that sometimes it's also environmental because I live in a city I live in Singapore it's relatively clean but there's still like um, dust and debris smoke and you know like things that cities have so I find that when I get very exposed to that my skin breaks out as well first things first before you do anything daily maintenance is really very important skincare steps aside your cleanser which is basically like the first step to your skincare should be something that helps with your acne situation so i have two products over here that i use on a daily not together but like interchangeably i'll use these two products to cleanse my skin and ensure that my skin is at its optimal state to both heal and also to look its best with or without makeup. This product in general is an exfoliating cleanser and when I say exfoliating, I do not mean like scrubs, like the Saint Ives scrub that everyone likes to reference. I'm talking about things that has AHAs and BHAs, I think that's what you call them, but basically chemical exfoliants. So I have two over here that I love to use. The first one that I've used and found that is very helpful is the Cos RX Salicylic Acid Daily Gentle Cleanser. It is something that contains 0.5% salicylic acid. The next item I like to use is the Good Molecules Clarify and Cleanse Bar. This is something that Good Molecules sent me and it's basically about the same sort of idea as the salicylic acid cleanser from Cos RX. I'm just gonna read off the website because it has a lot of ingredients that helps with the skin. It's non-stripping and it's made with a pH balanced blend of cleansing and soothing ingredients to wash away impurities from the face and body to leave skin clear and even. Its special ingredients is salicylic acid as well with tea tree oil. If you have acne, you should know that tea tree oil is antiseptic and antibacterial which helps with cleansing the skin and salicylic acid also kind of slows away like dead skin cells on a chemical level. And also it has kaolin clay which balances excess sebum and it has cocoa powder which is antioxidant rich to soothe inflammation and redness. And it also has rosehip and grapeseed oils to nourish and maintain a healthy moisture balance while promoting elasticity and it's formulated without soap or harsh cleansing agents. These two are very similar in terms of components. This is also made of botanical stuff so I'm not really very sure what's exactly inside here. I can't read the Korean. All I know is this one works. I had this one for way longer than I had this. If you're coming to ask me for recommendations, I will recommend either of these because both of these are more affordable but actually you can go ahead and try whatever is out there on your own and you can see what works for you. Whatever works for me doesn't mean that it will work for you but um, this is a good place to start looking at if you have no idea where to look. I'm not very familiar with the realm of salicylic cleansers and stuff because like obviously like I said the Cross RX one is like my first ever cleanser but I feel like after incorporating salicylic acid into my daily cleansing routine it has really helped my skin by leaps and bounds. Exfoliating the skin with an acid cleanser will help keep your skin smooth and dry skin free as well as make sure that excess sebum and dead skin and impurities don't get stuck in your pores because that combination in your pores is what will aggravate your skin and cause another whitehead pimple blackhead to appear. Don't overdo it. I usually use this or that once a day, nothing more. And I always kind of try to avoid my eyes because this skin is so much more delicate than the rest of your skin. One of my mistakes in the past was to over cleanse my skin because I, you know, like when you get so frustrated and you just want to scrub everything off. At one point, I used up to four cleansers in one sitting just to make sure that my skin is really clean. And I think that really fucked up whatever happened on my skin so that aside just make sure to be moderate with those if you're feeling very uncertain about using acid too much maybe try to alternate between like a regular cleanser without an acid exfoliant and one with so that you can still cleanse your skin without stripping it unnecessarily now to go into my 
current skincare routine that's been helping me with my dry skin acne situation. I have different routines for my AM and PM routines. So in my AM routine, I usually focus more on like hydration to prep myself for the day. And my nighttime routine has more of like a treatment aspect. So I kind of use like glycolic acid, sometimes retinol, lots of oils that are good for my skin and overnight masks that are hydrating. The first item that I use is the Mamon Floral Hydro and Pure Toner. And this toner is basically just hydration on the skin. My approach to hydration is to really pump the skin full of moisture because that's how the skin absorbs other things better. And then you can see that my skin now has like that sticky mochi feeling. Then I will go into my Moisture Ceramide Skin Softener by Mamond as well. It's like another toner but it's more of a softener step. I just use this after my toner. It can be used as a toner, but to briefly explain ceramides, ceramides are like very good for protecting the skin barrier from moisture loss. And that is good for people like me who has dry skin. I usually don't give time in between each step because everything is moisturizing anyways. I'm gonna go into my Good Molecules Hyaluronic Acid Serum. I can finally pronounce it. <laughs> and I'm gonna take about half a dropper of this thing. Hyaluronic acid is good for attracting and sucking in moisture from the air or from the outside. So usually the advice is to let it sit on your skin for 30 seconds at least or maybe a minute so that it can kind of absorb whatever moisture that is out in the open in the air or on your face because you should be putting it on while your skin is damp. So that's why when I put on all the toners, I don't wait for it to dry. I just go in straight with my hyaluronic acid because that would help my skin sort of retain that moisture a little more. Before the serum dries, I like to go in with this Mamon First Energy Serum um, Firming Boosting Serum. It's supposed to be an anti-aging product for like young adults. I just, I bought it last time just because it's like a moisturizing serum and it's that when the salesperson just kind of sold me. Recently I've just been using it like a hydrating serum. It feels like it has a lot of water content and the hyaluronic acid will help this serum sink in a lot faster and a lot more effectively. And then before I go into my moisturizer step, I'm gonna use some of my eye cream. So this one is the Waso Shiseido Eye Opening Essence. It looks like this in a huge ass tube. It's just a random um, eye cream. I don't really have a favorite go-to eye cream as of now. I ran out of my kills and I've been missing it for a very long time. Just haven't really gotten around to getting some new stuff to try out or even to replace some of my old favorites. So I'm just gonna kind of dab it on to my eyes. You will want to use your eye treatments before you put on moisturizers because um, the moisturizer will be too thick and then your eye cream won't be able to be absorbed into the skin. So for my moisturizer step, I've already introduced this in my previous videos. I think it was like two videos back can't really remember. But I'll be using the 4th Ray Beauty Turmeric Face Milk and the 4th Ray Beauty Glow Up Facial Oil <laughs> together. I'll get one pipette full of this turmeric face milk into my palm and about 4 to 5 drops of this face oil together and I'll just incorporate it into my hands and kind of just smooth it all over my face and neck and the clip touch area. I'm gonna go in with like a bit of Lucas pawpaw ointment on my lips for hydration. It's like the most foolproof lip balm thing for your lips. It's like inexpensive and it works. Fun fact, I also use the Lucas Pawpaw ointment for like emergency topical treatments. If you have itchy fingers and you like to pop pimples, the Lucas Pawpaw ointment cleanses the skin really well. So I like to kind of put it on after I've done the naughty things to kind of prevent the broken skin from getting infected again. I find that it's worked very well for me, especially because it's also moisturizing. So it kind of prevents that scabby things from forming. Now my skin is really, really rehydrated and it is now prepped for makeup. Basically, you want to give your skin Skin, the best chance it has to recover and in order to recover it has to have enough moisture to protect itself you know honestly speaking if you have skin like mine 
and you have already primed as well as I have, you don't need primers because the moisturizer is basically priming your skin. But if you have really bumpy, red, angry, acne situations and you have open large pores or even if you have like dry patches on your skin that are quite stubborn to remove, I highly recommend the Benefit Professional Primer. This is the best pore feeling primer that I've ever used. I use it on all my clients, my models. It makes makeup last forever and it makes makeup look so much better on camera and in person because it really just blurs the skin, fills in the pores, smooths out the skin and makes your makeup go on so much better and you just look a lot better because of this primer. I haven't been using this on myself because I don't need it. I don't really have a pore problem and my individual acne situation is not going to be improved by this anyways. For myself, because I don't really have an issue with pores and uneven skin texture, I like to go in with more color correcting things. So sunscreen is really important. You will definitely need a sunscreen, especially if you have acne skin, because the sun will definitely aggravate the pigmentation on your face when your acne is healing. But basically, the sun's not good for your skin. So make sure to put on an SPF that's really, really, very important and if your skincare products have no SPF in it, make sure to go in with an SPF afterwards. Mine didn't have SPF so I'm going to go in with my Clarins UV Plus Anti-Pollution Day Screen Multi-Protection Sunscreen. This is the blue one. I use this as a primer because it has like that blue tone to it. As you can see, it's kind of blue and this corrects my skin tone in terms of the undertone of the skin. If you have sallow skin and pigmentation is not a super big concern of yours, you can use something like this blue primer to kind of brighten the skin tone a little bit. Or you can use like a purple one for example. I have the Mamon Color Tone Up Base in purple. I believe they have a green one as well. The green one would be good for red, angry, acne or rosacea or any sorts of redness on your skin that you can't really get rid of and you're very concerned about it you can use that color purple will be good for like cancelling out yellowness and orange so it doesn't do much for like purplish pigmentation on the skin or like acne scars but it does do well for like brightening the entire face which is going to help the overall effect of the foundation once it's on that's what i tend to go for if you're here trying to search for a solution to covering your acne, you're probably sick of looking at very kicked on makeup that really really makes acne skin look a lot worse than it already is. In order to avoid that kind of cakey look on your skin, you gotta look for products that will allow you to use a lot less products for the maximum amount of coverage that it gives. But at the same time, depending on the quality of the product and how it's formulated, the higher the level of pigmentation in the product, the cakier the product will tend to look on your skin. Whether it be um, concealers or foundation, it's the same kind of idea. So my personal advice is to try to look for foundations that are more on the medium buildable coverage side of things rather than going straight for the full 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 coverage for oily skin sort of foundations. Yes, those are useful and yes, those gives you the most perfect coverage in the shortest amount of time. I would say stay away from those because unless you really know what you're doing, you will end up looking very mask-like and I don't think that's how you want to look like. So for myself, even when I had really really bad acne, I usually focused on going into a medium to full coverage, so like a medium buildable coverage foundation that will generally give my face a lot of coverage but not enough to the point of like masking my skin with paint basically and then going into spot treat whatever pimples and angry stubborn spots that are still peeking through underneath the layer of foundation that I've put on that way you can achieve the lightest thinnest layer of coverage possible with the maximum effect basically. Back when I had really bad acne, I loved using this ink lasting foundation from the face shop because it has that medium to full coverage and it is not too drying on my skin which meant that it didn't cling on to weird patches or scabs and it gave my skin a relatively nice glow all over which helped with giving the illusion that I still had really good skin but it wasn't so dewy to the point where it highlighted all of my flaws and all of my 
it bumps on my skin. I'm not going to use this one today however, so if you're interested in seeing how this one works on my skin, I have a video quite recently, I think it's like one or two videos ago also, I'll link it up here so that you can go and check out how I use this foundation and how it looks on my skin. For today, I will be using my Clarins Skin Illusion Natural Hydrating Foundation. It's a medium coverage foundation. I can argue that it can be light coverage as well, but I feel like when it goes onto the skin, it covers actually quite well, so I would say that it's like a light to medium buildable coverage foundation in a sense. And this one has a really luminescent finish to it that makes the skin really really juicy, really nice, dewy, but natural. This is actually a foundation that I love to use in a lot of my videos, so if you know my videos very well, you've seen me use this one. I've used this one in my no makeup makeup tutorial as well because it really gives you that kind of like skin-like effect and I love that kind of effect on my skin. I kind of just drip out this much on my hand and I feel like it's more than enough foundation for my skin. Sometimes if I have a lot more problematic skin, I might find that I need another layer to really correct the skin tone but generally that amount is more than enough for my face. I'm using like a flat top kabuki brush. This is from Shiseido and I'm just gonna kind of blend it all in. And when it comes to acne, like the places where you have acne, one tip is to kind of stamp it onto your skin instead of swiping because that will remove the product from your skin. And I find that a flat top kabuki brush is really good for enhancing the coverage of the product on your skin. The denser the brush, the more coverage it packs on for you. Now that I've blended everything in, firstly, this foundation is really really easy to blend in. And secondly, this foundation really gave my skin quite a nice bit of coverage all over. It covered a lot of my discoloration around my dark circles, my nose and my mouth. It also sort of covered all the pigmentation I had around here and on my chin. Not completely, so you can still see a little bit of like that redness, and this coloration picking out and that is something that I will definitely fix with a concealer. Alternatively, you can actually go in with another layer of the foundation to cover it once more, especially if you have like an angrier situation on your skin. It really depends on how severe your acne situation is. If you need like a guideline to how much foundation you're supposed to put on, this is about as much as you're supposed to put on. So what you're not going to do is you're not going to manically cover up all the acne with your foundation. You gotta have to limit yourself to two thin layers of foundation. Find the kind of coverage and finish that works the best for you. Whatever redness and discoloration that's left over your skin, that's the job for concealer, not your foundation anymore. In terms of concealers for your acne situation, before I found the holy grail of acne covering concealers. I loved using the Bond This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This concealer has really, really good coverage and it dries down in a finish that looks a lot like creamy looking, well hydrated skin. The only thing is you have to remember that for acne covering concealers, you gotta have to find a shade that is exactly your skin tone or exactly the shade of your foundation shade. If you're like me, you go for a foundation shade that's slightly lighter than your skin tone. Slightly. Therefore, your concealer shade has to be slightly lighter than your skin tone, exactly the shade of your foundation. It doesn't hurt if it is darker because it will help with the coverage, but it really does harm your look overall if it is lighter. And this concealer right here is the color Swan and it is lighter than my actual skin tone right now, so I'm not going to use this at the moment. The holy grail of covering discoloration acne pimples is this one from from the Sam, it's the Cover Perfection Tip Concealer in 1.5. This concealer is full coverage to the max. It's even more full coverage than the Too Faced one. So I like to just dot a little bit on like this. And I love the little tiny tip that it has because it really gives me control as to where I like to spot conceal wherever I find that there's like an acne scar, redness, discoloration that I want covered, I will put it on. This concealer dries pretty fast, so while I like to wait for my concealer to dry a little bit more so that it kind of locks in the coverage on top of my skin, for this concealer I've learned that I don't really need to do that because it dries relatively fast anyways. I'm just gonna really really gently just kind of pounce my finger on the same spot again and again and again to cover the discoloration on my face. You don't want to swipe, and you don't want to use too much pressure because the more pressure you use, the more you dislodge 
the concealer on your face. What you want to do is just pat it in so that it covers the skin properly. And you kind of want to just look as closely as possible under sunlight if you can so that you are able to discern properly whether it's well blended or not. Because I've made the mistake time and again of just blending lesser than I needed to and then when I looked at myself in a car mirror or like under the sun, the unblended areas were stark and obvious and it was quite embarrassing. And then because it's not like a full complexion look without like covering my dark eye circles and stuff, I like to go in with my Becca Cosmetics Aqua Luminous Perfecting Concealer. This is like a light giving, brightening concealer that I like to use for like darker areas around the nose, under my eyes, around my lips. Just gonna kind of dab it in in the same way with that brightness in the center of your face it takes attention away from the areas where you're trying to recede and with that you can see that my skin is so much more perfected now than before so because i have dry skin i'm not gonna go in with powder or anything like that but if you have oily skin and you find that your skin tends to get ridiculously oily throughout the day and your foundation would break down because of the oil now is a good time to go in with like a powder of sorts if you want you can get like a foundation powder that is of your skin tone and you can just kind of use a smaller brush like so to kind of dab on more coverage on top of where the pimples are to add more coverage over top if you don't need any extra coverage, go in with either a light coverage setting powder or a loose translucent setting powder and just go over top of wherever you've had your concealer and chances are if you have really bad acne, you'll have it all over your skin. So just a light dusting over all of those areas will help lock in the concealer and foundation a lot more. And I am now going to finish my face and I'll come back to kind of show you and talk to you a little bit more about acne and how to cover them. Hi, I'm back. My glasses are back on because I can't see anything without them and since we're done with the face, I think it's okay to put them back. Uh, I did my eyebrows and my eyeshadow mascara off camera. I did my eyeshadow with my Chloe & Coconuts palette. I used the shredded shade over here which is like a creamy sort of pale yellow shade all over my lids as like a base and then I also use some of this Kulala shade over here which is like a matte brown shade to kind of give my eyes a little bit of depth and definition and I kind of just topped it off with like some of my Snapscara mascara from Maybelline to define the eyes a little more so I don't look too naked underneath my glasses but I kind of just want to come back on without any color on my face to just sort of show you what a little bit of blusher and a little bit of lipstick can do to the face to make it look a lot better Um, even if you're good at covering your acne, you might not look as put together as you might think just by blanking out your acne because you just look like you have no colour and you look slightly dead. So what I recommend, just take like a gloss that has a little bit of colour, ideally something that's a little brighter. It doesn't have to be full coverage, it can be like a light gloss. It can even be like a tinted lip balm that has a little bit of like a pinky tone or like a ready tone, whichever you prefer. Just put it on. And then, even if you don't want to do any blusher because you feel weird with redness in your skin, a little bit of a coloured gloss that is pinkier or like a little redder will help bring back a little colour into your skin. And then in the event that you feel like you want some colour back in your cheeks, which I actually highly recommend that you do because blank cheeks don't look as nice as you think it is. And if you have really really bad acne, chances are you're really damn glad that there's no more redness in your cheeks which I can understand but in the overall look of your face if you have it very blanked out it's not going to look as good as when you kind of put back a little bit of blusher in the areas that you want the blusher to be at so you have complete control over where the colour is going on your face and it's not going to look anything like whatever your acne is looking down below any colour will do but ideally something that's a little brighter to kind of brighten up the skin because you're not going to do much for anything else unless you want to. I'm just going to go into a peachy pink sort of colour. This one is just a random one from Colourpop. They are collaboration with Zoella. I don't think it's in stock anymore but it's just something that's a little bit more like a peachy pink sort of shade, a corally pink kind of shade. Just kind of get a little bit off there onto your brush. Go in very lightly on your cheeks. And focus on blending it out very well. You don't need a lot, you just need enough 
to give your complexion a little bit of that pinky glow it barely takes any time and that extra couple of seconds you use to put on some blusher on your face will help the overall look look so much better makes you look healthy and cohesive not like you're dead and dying because you have no color in your face okay so that's the two extra bonus tips that i will be giving you today in my extensive comprehensive how to cover your acne with makeup sort of tutorial today if you want to see more acne related content from me just let me know i actually feel really really good about doing this video because i feel like after two to three years of actually struggling with acne i kind of know a little bit about acne and stuff so definitely let me know down below if you want to see more acne related content from me and with that said if you liked this video or have learned something from this video please remember to give me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel down below and also if you want to follow me on instagram and you haven't followed me there already my instagram handle is shamincccw right here i post a lot of makeup content there as well so make sure to check me out there and with that thank you so much for watching all the way to the end and i will see you in my next one bye